Michelle Obama says it was never easy being the wife of a driven politician. The demands of campaigning and politics strange their marriage, she says, and they sought help in couples therapy. Plus, in their first national TV interview together, we also hear from the woman who helped make the first family work, Michelle's mother. Only on CBS This Morning, Marion Robinson tells us about her eight years in the White House. But first, Michelle Obama talks about marriage. You've had a complicated relationship, it seems, with politics. Mm -hmm. So as, as the woman who is married to this man... I Every time Barack to came to me with uh, the idea of running for an office, I was just like, please don't do this. Pick another career. You're gifted. <laughs> you went to college. You got yeah. a law degree. Yes. You can do anything else besides this. Yeah. There's so many ways to save the world. But every time I had to think to myself, that approach is selfish. Because I knew I was married to someone who was gifted uh, and someone who could contribute. And but for the fact that I was married to him and I, yeah. it, it would be hard on me, um, I would want him to run. Yeah, but he was always a different kind of guy. He's he, a there's, different guy he's, altogether. He's a different you kind of dude. <laughs> there, there's a great story in the book where he said you wake up one night and he's staring into space. Is he <laughs> thinking about his dad or something right. bothering him? And what was he thinking about? It's like in income inequality. It's like, really, dude? <laughs> I thought you were dreaming about me. So you knew that he, like, was, mm. he was different. <laughs> You're very candid about talking about marital counseling. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I tell young couples, it's like when you get married, you've got that moment, those, those years, if you're lucky, where it's just the two of you, individuals on your paths, you come together when you need to, it all works until you have kids. <laughs> your first joint project where the inequalities are felt. You know, I'm working and managing child care and sick kids and trying to coordinate my job and he's flittering in there would tensions started to to arise and we knew that we needed to have a place where we could really work these feelings out was he like great let's go to counseling oh no yeah oh no i can't no, wait was, to go you know, he was barack is a problem solver it's like i'll buy a book and we will study <laughs> on relationships, on relationships yes. and we will study chapter 12 you read chapter 13 <laughs> and we can figure this out you know it's just one of those things like we don't need help from anybody <laughs> yes. and i was like you know because for me, I was like, I need to go to somebody who's going to tell you yeah. you're wrong. You're wrong. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And I talk about that. It's like, well, I didn't get that. The period of counseling for me was a turning point because I learned that I was still responsible for my own happiness. It wasn't his job to solely make me happy. I had to figure out my space in this. Do you still feel if we need to go back, we would do that? Even, Absolutely. Even though that you're yeah. so well known now. Oh, gosh, yes. That doesn't... Yeah. I, I think counseling is one of those tune-up times. Marriage is hard. Yeah. All marriages are hard. Um, and even, look, I, you, know, you know us. I love my husband. Yeah. We have a wonderful marriage, but it takes work. Work that was made easier thanks to her mother, Marion Robinson. The whole eight years you were in the White House, I think I could count how many times I saw you on TV, and I got up to one, and then I had to stop. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> it's just not something that you do. But why is it that you didn't want to do interviews, Mrs. Robinson? I didn't want to say anything that would... You know how you accidentally say things? Yeah. I figured if I didn't say anything, then I wouldn't say the wrong thing. <laughs> we don't have to worry about that. <laughs> when your daughter becomes first lady of the United States and your son-in-law is the president, how do you wrap your brain around that? What are you thinking? It's pretty difficult, let's face it. Uh-huh. Why? Because I felt like this was going to be a very hard life for both of them. And I want, was worried about their safety. Mm -hmm. And I was worried about my grandkids. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what got me to move to D.C. Why did you want her there? Why was it important to you? Oh, because for the girls, for the you know, girls. I, I, I wanted them to come home to family. There was just parts of the girls' lives that I just knew were going to be okay because mom was there. When I traveled internationally, grandma was there. You know, when I wasn't home at the end of the day, Grandma was there when the kids were still little and they needed to have someone be with them in school. I mean, you think about it, my girls were being driven around in a motorcade of three cars mm -hmm. with at least four grown adults with guns in each of those cars. 
Um, and I just thought that that's an unnatural way for a little yes. second grader to go to school. Yeah. Well, mom would ride in the car with her to make it feel like a regular carpool. You're in the White House where they say, Mrs. Robinson, can we get you something? Mrs. Robinson, do you need anything? Right. Was that a big adjustment It for was you? a huge adjustment. As a matter of fact, I talked them into allowing me to do my own laundry. You were doing your own laundry? Yes. <laughs> and she taught the girls how to do their laundry. They would go upstairs for laundry lessons. And she was so, the most beloved uh, exactly. figure in the White House. Exactly. Let me tell you. <laughs> I believe that. She had that. a stream of people, the, the butlers, the housekeepers, they would all stop by. And they would, Grandma's room was like the confessional. You know, everyone would go there and just unload, you know, and then they'd leave. People yeah. still visit Mom like in Chicago. They do? Some of the staff come and visit. If they're in town in Chicago, they visit her. Do you feel you have your life back? Do you miss I the do. White House at all? No. No. Not at all. <laughs> you have your life back. You know, I do miss the people. Yes. Because they, they were like family to me. And we got pretty close there. Your mom says she doesn't miss the White House, do you? Uh, no, no. I mean, the eight years was more than enough. And what I realized over the years yeah. is that home is where we are, you know. And the White House happened to be our home for eight years. Uh, but we took all that love and energy and we just moved it to another house. Yeah. It's still there. Um, and that's the part of that's the part of life that's important. What's the best thing about Michelle Obama that makes you proudest? Well, now I, my saying is, when I grow up, I would like to be like Michelle Obama. <laughs> oh, wow. 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 <laughs> we all just went, oh, wow, even the crew. Wow. What a beautiful thing between mother and daughter. Yeah. You can clearly tell they're really very tight. And, you know, she tells, Mrs. Robinson tells a funny thing that, you know, Michelle Obama was always a feisty little kid. She said, I actually could stop raising her when she was nine mm -hmm. because she was that good. Yeah. And you can tell that they are very, very well connected. And, and Michelle says that personally and professionally, she wouldn't have had the life she had if her mom hadn't been there. Because, wow. you know, you can always count on your mom. And to That's be there what... for the girls, to make a carpool somewhat normal, right, mm -hmm. when you have armed guards and three other cars following you with the grandma sitting next to you. And she was so low-key, guys. You never heard a lot about no one would say yeah. mrs robinson such a character yeah because she wasn't trying to be part of the family in a public way she loves her her, her children uh, barack and michelle and loves her grandchildren but she also had her own life and so she's very happy to go back to her own life yeah and i think too you hear about the presidents and first ladies and yes. families that are most respected who've been in the white house are ones that treat the people who work there yes. as family yeah. not check, as staff check, check. but as family that's what they did and they here's still visit you. mrs robinson mm -hmm. and here's to you mrs robinson <laughs> Indeed. you're going to be singing that all day <laughs> heaven loves you more than you could know oh 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 and today on cbs this morning podcast you can hear our entire interview with former first lady michelle obama and her mom that's marion robinson find the podcast on apple's podcast app or wherever you like to download your podcast. You got lots of options on. It's gonna be a good podcast. Mm.